So what was the inspiration for this book? Uh, the inspiration for this book, I Will Be Accountable and Responsible, well, basically it was an all boys speaking engagement where um, actually I didn't get a chance to speak, which is, uh, and the theme was uh, accountability and responsibility. And so what happened was um, I wasn't able to speak. And that night I went home, I was feeling a little down, a little depressed, but um, I just kind of just, I kicked it back up and I said, no, I'm not going to let that, um, I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to let that stop me. And so what happened was um, I went home and I created a t-shirt, which I'm wearing right now, which is says, I give a brother a hand, I will be accountable and responsible. And it just outlined all the areas of the book. So then after that, uh, a few days later, God just gave me the inspiration like, okay, well, why don't you take the areas of the book and develop it into a book? Let me um, take the areas of the t-shirt and develop it into a book. And also the desire to just uplift, inspire individuals to reach their success. I was just like, okay. And then the book just came about. So how have you used the messages in this book during the quarantine? That I thought was a very good question. Um, and basically during this quarantine, right? How have I used the messages in this book? Well, we all know uh, we witnessed the lynching of um, George Lloyd. George Floyd, uh, excuse me. And actually, I had a friend that lived close nearby. And he, uh, and he also purchased the book a while back. And um, after the lynching, he more or less came to my house. He only lived a, a few doors down. And actually, he's a substitute teacher. So he came to me just really, really just infuriated, just upset. And he was just hurt. And so during our conversation, no, because he was ready to go over there. He was ready to go and take a flight to go over to Minnesota and actually commit some stuff, just, just, just do some stuff against some cops. I mean, he was just really infuriated and he really wanted to go over there. So um, the first chapter is I will be accountable and responsible for my seed. And um, I kind of reminded him that, um, you know, if he went over there and something happened to him, that would be a good chance that he would endanger his seed. Of course, he don't have any kids yet, but that's the same thing with George Floyd because when, when they actually lynched him and they killed him, they didn't actually just kill George Floyd. They killed all the seeds that would come from, from out of him. So I reminded him of that, and um, that, that, was a, that was the first chapter in the book. Chapter two is um, I will be accountable and responsible for my potential and create Activity. And he's a very smart individual and he's very good with the young kids as well in the schools. And he um, created a program to actually help the youth and all of those things. And actually a vice principal put him in charge of a program as well. So I said, listen, also, man, don't forget, I'm sure that you can reach others and make a difference another way than going out there and just, you know, not really having a plan and just doing anything that could just cause himself harm. The third chapter, I will be accountable and responsible for how and what I think. That was key because his thinking was not more or less according to his true character at the time. Um, he, he was just more or less looking to um, react. And so, you know, I kind of talked him into, hey, l listen, um, just to kind of calm down his uh, thinking. And um, th that's uh, another way how I use the book. And then, of course, the fourth chapter, his choices and decisions, which is I will be accountable and responsible for the choices and decisions. So I kind of just helped them choose the right thing to do in the right time. And so I reminded him of the book and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay, good. And we actually just happened to go down to a protest in Newark and um, you know, it was cool. Um, and uh, everything, it worked out good after that. This okay. is your first book, correct? Yep, yep, this is the very what, first book. What are some tips or some things you experienced you learned in publishing your first book? Um, well, so actually, I learned a lot of uh, different things about uh, publishing my first book. But what I learned about myself in publishing this first book was that once I apply the principles that I've been learning for the past uh, 20 years in terms of a personal de development and just being successful, 
I learned that when I actually applied those things, it may sound corny, but I could actually really accomplish anything that I put my mind to. So that's one, that's so that, that was one important thing that I learned about myself um, throughout this um, first book. And what was the most difficult or most challenging thing that you can remember from publishing this book? See, now that one, that's a very good question. And I was like, wow. Um, the most difficult part was, it was a few things that just more, more or less um, came together. Les Brown, right? Uh, he's one of my um, inspirators that I listen to often, um, inspirations. And he said, the, one of the hardest things he had to overcome with regard to being successful is just believing in himself. And that was one of the hardest things about doing and creating this book was first, I really had to believe in myself. And that was something that I struggled with like all my lifetime. So it was very, very important that I believed in myself. Another thing was um, overcoming that inner voice inside me. You know, um, in, a script, um, in the Bible, there's a scripture that says, whenever I want to do good, evil is always present. So definitely that inner voice would always fight me and tell me, no, I'm not good enough. No, I can't do it. No, individuals aren't going to like it. So I had to constantly fight that inner voice while doing this, uh, um, while creating this first book. And um, another thing was the fear of the book not being good enough. Um, and, you know, fear can just, you know, uh, will always throw you off course anyway. So I had to deal with that. Um, and distractions. Oh, so many things just try to just come in my way in the process of writing this book. So that was another, another difficult thing that I had to overcome. In addition to that, um, a lot of people deal with this. I know I have throughout my life in regards to just starting and stopping things and never a following through. And that was one, um, another one of the big things in the pot that was actually a difficult writing this first book. Um, I was really challenged to start something and see it all the way through. So those things and the combination was like really, really um, was the most hardest, was the most hard part in, um, in writing this first book. Yep, 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 those things put together. One of the things I remember when I, prior to me being um, disciplined, Ugh. when I was writing my books, I was like, oh, I need music. And I have music on my computer, but sometimes maybe I want to hear a song that's not on my computer, so I'll go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. so let me just okay. look up the song, I'm going to press play, and then I'm going to start writing. An hour later, I'm still on YouTube. <laughs> An hour and a half later. <laughs> oh, I never got to the song because you know when you get to YouTube they show you all those recommendations and what's trending uh -huh. and start mm -hmm. watching video and then uh, annoyingly enough on the side of YouTube you see more videos that are interesting more so you're like this is the last video I'm watching and then I'm gonna find my song and then I'm like <laughs> I'll just do this tomorrow yeah so I finally had like... to learn how to stay away from YouTube when I'm yeah, writing yeah. because okay. mm -hmm. when you said distractions come I can be honest, I gave myself distractions. Wow. Like they didn't come, I, like, I would be like, ugh, I don't feel like writing this today. <laughs> and so I gave myself distractions. And I finally had to say, I have to stop doing that because it's not healthy and mm -hmm. it's not conducive. And it's, you know, if we're supposed to be faithful in the least. Exactly. Something as simple as giving yourself a distraction so you don't finish the work you know you're supposed to be doing is not good. So I had to yeah. finally learn how to, when I get, sit down at this computer to write, that's all I'm doing. Okay. And even sometimes I won't even turn music on because that'll, even if I turn music on, I'm like, okay, what do I want to listen to? And I have uh, like a whole bunch of this and then I think I want to listen to that. So it's yeah, like, I have to yeah. learn how to stop giving myself distractions so I can just mm -hmm. write and finish it. Okay. Okay. Yep. 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 But I have a quick question um, for you, right? Why do you think you gave yourself those distractions? Um... I'll say two reasons. The first reason is the process of the, the story coming up with stories is fun for me. Oh, okay. But the process of typing it out is not. Ah, uh, okay. And then I guess you could say I'm a little OCD because I usually tell people just write it out and go back and edit it. I don't do that. Oh, wow. Okay. I have to edit it while I'm going. 
and it has to be proper formatting. And if it's not, I have to go back. And so, and then the second reason wow. is Ouch. for me, even though I know I need to stop doing this because I've learned that it doesn't work this way, but in my mind, I need to have a beginning, middle and end before I start writing. Like the whole mm -hmm. thing in my, in my mind, even okay. though I know sometimes if I just start writing, it'll come to me. I still hate writer's block. I like to just, if I take a break, it's because I'm hungry or I need to go to sleep. I don't uh, want to take a break because yeah. of writer's block. So if I don't think I have it all, I'll make up excuses as though I, I can't sit down and write. Uh, okay. But okay. I had to learn, actually recently, I was writing a short film and I knew the ending. <laughs> but I really, there was, originally it was supposed to be a full in film, but it was so much stuff that I didn't need. Oh, so I said, I'll just okay. make it short. But then I was like, I don't know how to get to the end. So I kept procrastinating to sit down and do it. And the Holy Spirit was like, just write it backwards. You know the ending, write the ending, and you take it from there. Wow, and that's that. what I did. I wrote it, I started from the ending, and it, it and that's the second time he told me to do that. And you think by now I would just do that? Yeah. But I'm stubborn in the sense that I, like, I want to do beginning, middle, and end. But I wrote the end. And then the rest, then I wrote like another part. And then, because sometimes I'll say something while I'm writing, but I didn't actually say what was said. So now I have to go back and write that okay. same. Oh, so wow. Okay, okay. It really does write itself, but I have to learn how to just, um, what's the word? Force myself, um, discipline myself to just sit down and write it, regardless mm -hmm. of the fact that I don't like formatting and I don't like typing yeah. it out. And I did buy um, a while ago, I think it was called Dragon. It's a software where you put ear thingies on and you speak into the computer and it types it out for you. Really, how does that work? <laughs> I want one of those. It's, I didn't like it. No? No. Wow. I, I mean, you would, because um, you basically have to, today I went to the park. Like you can't just flow it out. Oh, okay. And for me, yeah. when I'm yeah. in my mind, when I'm thinking of it, it flows out and it does it exactly. do it quickly. Yeah, and that and makes sense. It's just, and it doesn't really format it for you either. So you got to go back and format it anyways. It just types out the words oh. for you. So mm -hmm. it was, I mean, it was okay, but I couldn't get with it. Exactly. Okay. So okay. I mm -hmm. said, I guess I'm going to have to type this stuff out myself. But the old yeah, fashioned I'm, way, I'm, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm more disciplined now than when I began, which is good. Yeah, oh my goodness. You just have such a body of work on your website. I was just like, oh my goodness. Uh the conversation is getting really great, but don't you dare go away because we have more for you. I will be accountable and responsible is an informative personal development book on how to tap into one's gifting, talents, and purpose to attain unshakable character and to sustain higher levels of maturity and success. Available today at accountableandresponsible.com.